Borehole Sighting Finding the best place to drill a borehole? How to estimate what is underground? We can't know exactly without drilling. But we will learn a technique to make estimates, electricity can help us with that. But first the difference between permeable and impermeable soil types. Permeable soils, for example sand, allow water to pass through. Impermeable soils, for example clay, don't allow water to pass. Let's say we have two permeable layers with an impermeable layer in between. If a permeable layer holds water, it is called an aquifer. Each aquifer might have its own rainwater catchment area, water in a second or deeper aquifer could be under pressure. That is why water in boreholes that reach a second aquifer could rise higher than in shallow wells. Water might even flow out the borehole without using a pump. Although this is a very rare situation. Here are some names used to define different types of wells and aquifers. Different soil types, particle sizes, and permeability. Different materials have different electrical resistivity. Knowing resistivity of underground layers can help us find the best place to drill. But before using any electrical equipment, a good borehole cider will first talk to the customer and physically inspect the area. The customer will probably show you a few preferred places to drill. Look for possible sources of pollution and exclude some preferred locations if needed. A borehole must be at least 30 meters from latrines, septic tanks, and animal shelters, and at least 150 meters away from garbage dump sites and industrial water processing plants. Ask people in the area, where do people get water from now? Do these sources run dry? If they dry up, why did nobody dig deeper? What are water levels in these wells? Did other drillers try to drill here and what was their finding? Is there all year round green vegetation? Are there any ant hills in the area? Locate higher and lower areas in the landscape. Answers to these questions will give you some ideas where to measure. Never start to use the electrical equipment without this important info. It is like playing dart blindfolded. How does electrical sounding work? Electricity travels easier through some types of materials than others. If we stick two pins in the ground and connect them to an electrical power supply, then electricity will flow from one end to the other. How much electricity will flow depends on the type of soil and how far the pins are apart from each other. We can calculate the soil resistivity by measuring voltage and amperage. We like to measure deep into the ground. But we can't use very long pins of 60 meter to reach that deep. Luckily electricity that is applied on a surface will travel in a ball shape through the ground, so if we put the pins further from each other the ball will be bigger before it reaches the other pin and therefore it will reach deeper. Mr. Wenner discovered that the following setup combined with some calculations, gives good results, he puts two pins far apart and connects them to a high voltage direct current power supply and measured the amps flowing through it. He also put two other pins closer together and measures voltage between them. The distance between the four probes must always be equal, let us call it A. That distance is also the approximate depth that you are targeting. If you want to measure deeper, simply increase distance A and move all four pins further apart. This principle is used in professional equipment as well as in more affordable systems. The first step is to measure the points from your physical inspection on the same depth or horizontal plane. We call this horizontal electrical profiling or HEP. Choose a depth where you expect drilling difficulties. For example, in eastern Zambia we use A is 15 meters. Lay out 22 and a half meters of measuring tape to both sides. Make holes, water them and hammer the pins in the ground. Roll out wire and connect it. Measure. Analyze the result. Loose soils that can hold and pass water usually have a low resistivity, ohm meter. So the lowest measurement might be the best position, however, machine drillers with air compression don't like soils that are too loose. Let's assume we want the softest spot. Then we do one last HEP measurement in the middle of the two lowest measurements to find out if maybe the best place is in between. 
Now we want to measure the full soil profile from top to bottom at this best location. We can do that by taking several measurements at the same spot at different depths, this is called vertical electrical sounding or VES in short, start with the deepest measurement first and decrease the distance each step. Attention, the apparent resistivity from the measurements cannot be used to make conclusions yet, but we can use it to filter out wrong measurements because these curves must be smooth. So you know an escaping measurement is a mistake and should be measured again. Check your wire connections and make sure the probes make good soil connection. Because electricity passes through a huge volume of soil, not only at the targeted depth. Electrical sounding cannot detect cracks or separate loose rocks in the soil because electricity will simply flow around it without us noticing it. Why is computer analyzing needed? Note that even if the pins are far from each other, the majority of the electricity will still flow in a straight line on the surface because that is the shortest route. Only a small part will reach deeper. That is one of the reasons why we need complicated software to compensate for this effect. But the software can only compensate if you have also measured a lot of shallow levels even if they are not interesting for the driller. In other words, the software needs to know what the resistivity is from all above layers before it can say anything about a deeper layer. The difference between the measurement result, here 300 ohm meter, and the real resistivity, here 4000 ohm meter, is often huge. In this example we use the Drilling Toolbox Android app made by Practica. The system calculates models for 3, 4, and 5 layers. And a model where soil changes smoothly from one to another type. Select the model that is applicable in the area. Study existing drill logs or borehole completion reports. Or monitor drilling attempts in the area. To find out what model to use. How to read these graphs? After the software has analyzed the measurements, we can now study the results and see what we can learn from it. In a VES measurement, the x-axis is representing the distance between the probes and is similar to the depth into the ground. The y-axis represents the apparent resistivity of the soil in ohm meter. Note that both axes are not linear scaled, they are logarithmic, that means they don't increase from 0 to 1, to 2, to 3. Instead they do increase from 0 to 0 0.1, to 1, to 10, to 100, to 1000. Also note how the spacing in between is different. Unfortunately, we can't say that a specific apparent resistivity corresponds always with one specific type of soil. There is too much overlap because slight variations in minerals and moisture have great influence on soil resistivity. But, in general one can assume, the higher the apparent resistivity in ohm meter. The harder and more compact the soil is, and the lower ohm meter, the looser the soil is. Water passes easily through loose soil, meaning lower ohm meter. As rule of thumb, one could say, everything under 100 ohm meter is breakable by hand power, like manual drilling. Everything above 1000 ohm meter is too hard, even for most machine drillers. In this example, well diggers or manual drillers could reach 10 meter deep and a common machine driller could reach 23 meter deep. We like to see a spoon shape of graph because it means that there is a softer layer on top of a harder layer. This softer layer can hold water because the harder layer prevents that water from flowing down. There is a high chance that ground water is located there. But it is not sure. VES cannot measure where water is. That is why your visual inspection of existing wells in the area is extremely important. The report for your customer must include, customer preferences, possible sources of contamination, field observations including water levels, HEP, and what you learn from it, VES graph with analyses and your interpretation of it, conclusion, suggest best suitable drilling method and best location. Also explain the physical limitations of the used method. Our smart center in Zambia provides practical training, for example in borehole siting and even making your own VES equipment, visit our website and have a chat.